As you know, I'm Kyneton the Genius, and today I'm going to start teaching simple logistic regression in Python. The reason is because of this. I want to start classification so that we can start building classifiers, but I figure out that it's better for you to have a good knowledge of logistic regression. For instance, this is the classifier I've been building for several hours today, but you can't do this if you don't understand logistic regression. So we'll come to this later, in time, we are going to look at this classifier. So the first thing you need to learn when you are want, want to go into classification and building classifiers uh, is to learn about logistic regression. Logistic regression is classification. Make no mistake about it. So logistic regression happens in this way. We have data set X and Y. And we have X. We are trying to predict Y, where Y is yes or no, or ones and zeros. In this case, we have something called a binary classifier. So I'm going to repeat again, a logistic regression model is a classifier and that is the starting point for you to learn classification. So I've covered regression before now and now we are going to move into classification by learning logistic regression, which is a classification model. So please subscribe to my channel. If you've not subscribed, hit the subscribe button below. Uh, in that way, you motivate me to keep making these lessons. And also, if you have challenges, let me know. So I like breaking down the lessons into chunks so that everybody will be able to follow. All right, this is the steps we are going to take. We are going to import all the required modules, generate our data set, visualize using scatterplot, split our data set into training and test data set. I already explained this before now. Uh, if not, check my previous lessons. Then we create a logistic regression object perform logistic regression and view the coefficient and intercept and display the confusion matrix. Now the confusion matrix is very, very important. Make no mistake about it. It helps you to see the performance of your model. Even if you are building model based on decision tree or naive base or, or, or some other classifiers, uh, the confusion matrix helps you see how you perform how the, the, the classifier performs. So in the case of true positive, it classifies a yes correctly, the number of yes classified correctly. False negative is the number of false, false positive is the number of yes classified wrongly. False negative is the number of no classified wrongly. And true negative is the number of yes class, uh, no classified correctly. So in the case of false negative, I mark it as right because it's a problem and if you if you if you get this wrong, if you classify something that is true and you classify it as false, you've committed something called a type two error, which is very very serious. For instance, somebody has cancer, and you classify him that he doesn't have cancer, and you doesn't yeah, and the doctor doesn't give a cancer treatment, you know the result, a life might be lost. So that is why this case is called. Type 1 error. While this case, maybe somebody does not have cancer and you say he has cancer, well, he takes the medication and maybe nothing happens. It's an error, but it's a different kind of error. So we are going to view the confusion matrix, how our, our, our classifier performed. So let's get to work. Uh, let's, at this point, I'm going to actually be fast in building this model. So as for the import, I'm going to simply paste the, the modules we need. So I'm not going to spend time to explain all these modules. Uh, in this case, we have make classification. This is for generating our data set by plots, uh, for plotting, this is for, for logistic regression, for visualization, uh, and so on. So just take a look, they are very easy. So now we are going to generate our X, Y data set for that has been um, uh, uh, customized for, to perform logistic regression. So I'm going to say X, Y, is equal to now I told you that make classification that is available in SKLine the data site helps to generate a data site that will be used for logistic regression. So I go, I'm going to use this function make classification make underscore classification and we are going to specify the parameters to this function. So I'm going to start by specifying the number of samples we want. So I'm going to say n samples equal to 100. So let's use 100 samples here, comma, 
then we specify number of features and features equal to one so one x just one x and one y so so that we can keep it simple later you can try to do uh something more complex so number of classes two classes but we are talking about logistic regression or a binary classifier and also know that in logistic regression is on the output can only be one and zero all right take note so number of classes let's specify will be equal to two classes maybe just one and zero and so some of these things are not really optional but i'm going to specify number of clusters per class equal to just one and one one cluster per class flip y i have no idea exactly what the flip y uh, parameter is used for but let's use a value of 0 0.03 and finally i'm going to put i'm going to simply copy and paste uh the remaining parameters that i have on my clipboard so let's see so for you uh since you are learning i, I recommend take some time to change up things a bit and see what you have okay so this is all the parameters have been set for the logistic regression model so let me just shift this a bit to clean up things so the easiest way to learn, as I used to say, is to do it yourself. So possibly pause this video, get your computer ready and do it yourself. All right, so I'm going to run this function now to generate our data set. So I'm going to simply, first I'm going to run this, import everything. So you can see the kernel is busy at this point. Let me shift this a bit to this way. So you can see kernel busy. So if that happens that way, take note that you need to wait. Also, I want you to take note of this formula. So this formula for logistic regression, this formula for linear regression. I think they are very easy to follow and understand. All right, so the next thing we want to do, I would like to just view the data set. So I'm going to click here and just insert one cell below just to view the data set. So I'm going to say, let's say I want to view X. So I'm going to just say print x so let's see print x okay so we actually have not run this so i'm going to run this at this point uh it says keyword argument repeated line seven flip ah okay i repeated this okay so run and clusters and clusters per class so x is s should be there let me run again. Uh, must be smaller than two. So I actually say it one and I'm all right. So I think we are done. So I'm going to now check what the values of X are. So it generated values for X. And if you check values for Y, you'll see that Y is simply ones and zeros, as you can see, that we illustrated here in in the in the in the, in the whiteboard. All right, so we have our X and Y values. I'm just enlarging this, and I'm going to just delete this cell. So let's visualize our data set uh, at this point. Let's try to visualize our data set to see how it looks like. Now, if we plot a scatter plot, you'll see that it appears completely different than what you used to know from linear regression. So I'm going to say plt.scatter x y and actually say color map color map is equal to reds i think this is correct reds okay All right so uh and i'm going to say plt the show okay so just visualizing the data we've not actually performed anything so this is how the data set looks like so it's a data set specially made logistic regression okay let me shift this a bit all right so the next thing we want to do is to split the data into test data set and training data set already you know that in in in, in, in supervised learning of which classification is super, uh, supervised learning you need to split data into 
by some training data set. So I'm going to write the formula x train. So we have x train and x test, y train and y test. So this 100 data, I want to use 30% of this data to be the test data set and 70% of this data to be the, the, the training data set. So the test data set is always less than the training data set. So I'm going to say the, functions, the function is train tests split and specify the x and y and then specify random states. So I'm going to shift this a bit, specify random underscore state equals one, All right? So we've split this data uh, into X train, Y train. So basically, if I go back to the whiteboard, I just try to explain to you at this point. So maybe I just take a different pen color. So if we are divided into two parts, this is upwards, we have our training data set. So a training data set has the, the classes, which is the Ys, right? But the test data set is only this subset. Why? Well, this is a test data set. Why is because, the reason is because a test data set does not have a label because your model have to predict the values of the Y. So while we have this to be the training data set, this year, the test data set is this small subset made up of only X values. Now I leave it, uh, I, leave, I leave it up to you for you to try to, to figure it out, uh, try to view it and see how it goes. Now I'm going to now uh, create a logistic regression object. So let's call it law, law L, let's just call it L, LR is equal to logistic regression. Of course, if you have done linear regression, you know that you simply create this object. This object is what you now use to perform the regression. So we've created it. And then we are going to fit our fit this this our uh, this object through our data. It's lr.fit. And we are using the training data set. And so x train, y train. So basically, take note that this is X train and Y train is divided into these two parts. All right. All right. So, uh, right. Okay, good. So we are performing the training now. So what happened at this point? We are creating a model and training this model using the training data set. So that when we now give it this other test data set that does not have the labels, it is going to predict it. So we have a few things. Uh, it iterations 100. Uh, number of jobs one, so you don't have to worry much about this. Now let's see the coefficient and intercept of this. So the coefficient and intercept, I'm going to just, you can actually figure it out from here. So we have, can say f of x one over one plus e to the power of minus uh, beta zero plus beta one x. So in case you want to do a bit of calculation, this is what this is the intercepts we are using. So I'm going to print the intercepts here. So lr.squared, more like the same in linear regression, and print lr.intercept. Alright, so I'll read a little underscore here. So these are slope and intercepts. Now the question is how good did our regression model perform? And that is what brings us to the confusion matrix. So basically we are trying to make sure that we have very little false negative here. We want this to be large, we want this to be large, we want this to be low, and we want this to be low. All right, let's see how we did. To display the confusion matrix, you simply say, oh, okay, uh, there's a question. Okay, we actually have not performed uh, using the uh, test data set, we actually need to try to make prediction using the test data set. That's the only way we can calculate how much mistakes or how, how good the model is. So let me put one cell above and say, now make prediction. 
economic prediction. And to make prediction, it's more like the same way you make prediction in linear regression. So you simply say y predicts is equal to lr dot predict and specify x x best. All right. So this is what we have. So we are making prediction now. After making this prediction, we now see how well our regression model performed. Okay. So, so using 30 is to 70, we have at, we have 100, uh, 100 observations that we choose. And now we've used 70 of them to train the model. And now we are using 30. We are predicting for 30. So let's see how well. I'm going to display now the confusion matrix. I'm going to say confusion matrix. Confusion matrix, I'm going to now specify the y test, the real values of the y test, and the y we predicted. I prayed. Right, so I'm going to run. Good. Good. I think our model did not do so badly, right? So if we compare this with the, the confusion matrix, well, we got two, two uh, false, uh, false negative here. Uh, which is not good, but we got zero, zero false positive, which is so great. And we also have true positive, 14, and nine true negative, all right? So we actually did not do badly. So there are other things, for instance, we have true positive rates, uh, true negative, uh, false positive and false positive rates. You can calculate this by saying total positive, uh, total positives classified correctly over all the positives, all right? So you figure it out yourself. Maybe I'm going to talk about it later. If you want to learn about it, maybe tell me in the comment box below. All right, so hopefully this is clear. I hope this is very clear and simple. So because after now, we are going to be going into decision tree and be doing something more advanced in classification. And in the next class, I'll say we are going to be using the Titanic data sets. That's an interesting data set to work with. Uh, I'm going to just show you the Titanic data sets. Uh, let me see. I don't know if it's open. Okay, so it's not open, but I recommend you subscribe to my channel. Hit the subscribe button, like this video, and share it around. And then we continue with uh, classification, this time using decision tree and we are going to work with the Titanic data site. So we see in the next class.